Hi, this is Juliet Ripley Dunkelberger with the Issaquah Schools Foundation Artistic Support Program. I've put some videos together for you about the arts and creativity. I hope you enjoy them. So we're going to spend a little bit of time relaxing and drawing today. We're going to be drawing a mandala and you're going to need a pencil, some paper, a ruler, and then I have some household items here that I'm going to be able to use as templates for circles because my freehand circles aren't fantastic. And then later you may want some permanent markers to be able to go over your pencil lines with. The ideas that we're going to be drawing are mandala and then after um, we're done with that then you can use this to color in at a later time um, or you could make copies of it and have something that you can sit down and do that's relaxing for you. And this can also be a personal, um, using shapes and forms that you really like that personally resonate with you. So I'm going to start actually by placing my feet flat on the ground, get myself grounded, take a deep breath. Hold that for a moment and then I'm going to exhale. That just helps let go of any uh, tension that may be coming about from having to take care of everything or because you've got a bunch of people at home and everybody's running into each other at this point. Uh, with this project, we're going to start by making a circle, just a nice dot there in the center of our paper. And then we're going to divide up this space into 16 equal spaces, equal-ish because I am just going to do this by eye. So I'm gonna take my ruler and draw one line. And so we've divided it in half so far. Now I have it divided into quarters. And then we'll do this again. There are a couple eights. So this is something if you want to do this with your kids where you could be talking about proportions, ratios, um, a little bit of math. So I have eight spaces right now. And now I'm going to divide each of those into two one more time. That'll give me those 16, mostly even wedges that radiate out from that center point. One more to go. And this is just going to make your um, your drawing, your repetition of your shapes a little easier going around a circle. So now I have my 16 wedges. And I'm going to grab my handy dandy templates. And it's really nice if the template is see through. <laughs> this makes it much, much easier. And I'm going to draw mostly around this. I know with this particular lid, I do have that little handle bit there. So I'll set it back down and go around that spot. That's pretty good. Next one also, I'm going to try to center it as best I can. Hold that down. And let's see, this one I was not able to find the size that was see-through, so we're just going to gauge is it even from most of the edges of that circle. Looks pretty good. I'm not looking for perfection. And then my last one, same thing, just try to center it within that circle there. And draw around that one. That's mostly centered. A little off, that's okay. And then I'm going to add another circle in here, freehand. And you just kind of keep, you keep going over your lines until you get the lines you want to keep. And then you get rid of the rest later. 
because nobody can draw a perfect circle the first time anyway. So we've gotten this broken out. And now I have a little bit of, a little bit of scrap paper over here. And I'm gonna come up with two shapes that I'm gonna to want to use to repeat in my mandala. And I've been looking at some of the shapes of flower petals and that sort of thing in my garden. So I am gonna go with just a, a simple elongated U form there. And I'm gonna have another one that has a little point in the middle. You can pick whatever shape you want. It could be uh, something, a real simplified version of something that you see, that you like every day. Um, you know, if you wanted to come up with, you know, I wanted to be able to use a heart, um, but maybe you could cut it crossed here so you could just use that top form in one area and maybe the pointy form in another. Um, all sorts of different things that, that you could do, but just pick some um, two shapes that are yours that you're going to use repeating around the circle. So then I'm going to start here in this center circle. And I'm going to start by making that little, <laughs> it's kind of hard to keep them even, that little loopy petal-like form. So I'm going to end up with something that looks kind of like a, a daisy. You'll notice that I'm turning the paper instead of trying to turn my hand. This makes it so much easier. And you're going to work from the center out with just the simple forms at first. We'll go in and add some, some other repeating shapes and details later. So there's my first round. And now I'm going to work into this one. I'm going to um, probably use my other shape. And how do I want to squish that shape in there? I think I'm actually going to do it this way. So I'm going to make it go across two sections and I'm going to try to repeat it as close as I can as I work my way around the circle. By using simple forms that are repetitive, that are repeated as I move along, this is actually part of that relaxation technique. It keeps your brain working on trying to keep the shapes similar. It's just enough work to keep your um, to keep your brain busy, but which means you can't be thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow and oh my gosh, did I do the grocery shopping I needed to do and whatever else is going on in your life. Just keeping yourself focused on making those similar repetitive marks will help keep you in the now, which helps to lessen anxiety. Okay, working my way around. All right, now I'm gonna move out to this next one. I'm gonna go back to this kind of a shape. I'm gonna start it from that line here and come down into that line. And see how now one shape is kind of starting to just flow from the last shape. I'm using these lines that I put in initially as guidance. At the end, once I've gone over my lines with some permanent markers, then I'll be able to erase all of this pencil. And so I won't have a grid kind of looking at me anymore. I'll just have the finished piece. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to that pointed petal form in the next round. I think I'll probably just keep alternating. So anything simple and repetitive like this, gosh, it could be taking a walk, it could be washing the dishes, it could be folding socks. Um, I'm, you know, coming up with all those kind of household chores, but um, so many of those are really simple and repetitive that they can be used as an opportunity to, to let 
let ourselves relax a little bit and just focus on the moment and stay there. It can be difficult. You see how this shape and this shape turned out a little bit differently. I can keep just going over that until I get a line that I want to keep and then I'm done because I'm going to erase everything else anyway. So if you're finding yourself judging what you're doing or, oh gosh, see this one's wider than that one and that totally throws everything off, um, take a deep breath. Remind yourself that this is just about staying in the moment and allowing yourself to relax. The purpose is not to make a perfectly symmetrical, repeated piece. And then maybe try to use a phrase like, what are all the ways? I could make that mark more into what I want or what are some other shapes I could use next time. Sometimes by doing something you hadn't intended you're actually going to end up with something you like better. So as long as we can set those judgments aside then we're much more able to be objective and use our mistakes as a learning opportunity and sometimes as an aha I like it I'm gonna keep that or I'm gonna do that next time like I like that deep line there it doesn't quite match what I had going on here but I may you know, pay attention to that or I like this space actually that's happening between those two and here as well that's something I may add in as a detail as I go on Okay, well, if I'm going to continue with the same pattern that I have been doing, I'm not going to make this totally rounded. I'm kind of liking how it came to a point there. So it's all kind of a hybrid of the two. So there was a study out of Texas A&M and Emory Emory State University where they had people do some drawing. They had them draw, one group of people draw objects um, sitting down and looking at something and trying to draw it. And another group of people drew um, mandalas using imagery that they, that was meaningful for them personally. And out of those two groups, the groups that drew the mandalas actually had significantly more anxiety reduction than the groups that were drawing an object. So this sort of repetitive work is, is quite useful. And we've actually you know, seen it that um, those outcomes were replicated in numerous studies after. And we even see this in if you're just um, just coloring in a, a mandala. You don't even have to draw your own. All right, I think I'm gonna go one more to get that kind of that pointed. I'm gonna make it a little bit lower and fatter than those other ones have been for this last round. There we go. That's nice. Oop, that looks a little different. I'm getting close to filling in, finishing up with these kind of the shapes to begin with. And then, so next I'm going to start on some detail. And detail can be just more of the same shapes, maybe smaller, filling in spaces. I could also use lines, straight lines I could use. 
stripes using repetition works really nicely. Like I pointed out before, I like having that little um, differentiation in there. So if I have this line and then I come back a little deeper and have that line, I like how that works. I'm going to go and do that all the way around. Mm. Nope, that didn't go quite in like the other. There we go. Think about how I could then utilize my black pen, my black marker when I'm done here, is maybe these forms will be black and this space will be white, leaving me space to potentially color it or do something else. All right, what else could be interesting? So just a simple repetition of a form. Ooh, I like how that came right into that point there. So I'm going to do that on the other side too. So I'm kind of adding some more spaces. I'm thinking about this as something I can use to color in later. So I want to create enough differentiated space that it'll be interesting when it gets colored in, but I'm not a person that likes to color in little tiny, tiny spaces either. Um, if you are someone that does a lot of doodling, I, I'm sure you will have all sorts of forms, uh, or I should say shapes and lines and things that, that you've utilized before that you could fill in a lot of these spaces with. spend as much time as I might want actually doing doodling, but okay, I'll look for some other places. What else could I add here? So I could <laughs> what if I just added so using that line, but then some adding some other lines that'll kind of make this maybe look like a little bit like a leaf. Repeating that all the way around. We're just going to keep on working on this, filling in details until you are happy with your result. And then we would move on to going over the lines you want to keep with your black permanent marker. And then you'll have a nice contrast between the white paper and the black marker, especially once you get all the, the pencil erased. And I am not necessarily trying to draw really lightly here, um, but I did start with a nice sharp pencil so I don't have to push hard. Or, Cause I do want these lines to be erasable when I am finished. Let me think of what else 
I could add. What if this space here had more of a starburst pattern as well, but a little bit straighter line? Not that little curve at the end. That could be a fun thing to have different colors filling in later. I'm just really focusing on making these marks. Making decisions as I go. Nope. <laughs> kind of moved from a straight line to a slightly curved line there. That's okay, so I've used some repetition where this has become similar to that, and this outline is going to be similar to that outline. Um, when we use repetition in visual art, it helps create a more cohesive piece. It makes everything look like they belong together. The thing that creates interest is when things are different. Because our brain automatically goes to things that are novel or new. So we've done a bunch of repetition with shapes here, but this one is bigger than that one and this one is smaller than that one. So that balance between repetition and um, variation helps make the piece interesting. Okay, I'm sure there'll be some other details that I may add as I go on, but I'm gonna go ahead and with these couple sections that I really like and I wanna keep as they are, I'm gonna go over them one of my black pens. This paper does have a little bit of a texture to it, and you can see that as the pen moves across the paper. Totally up to you as to what kind of paper you want to use, or what kind of paper you just have around the house. This one was a leftover from, I think, some scrapbooking project years ago. I am just using the materials that I have. I didn't go, you know, make any special trips to go out and get any new supplies to make this work. So I'm just use what you have. No reason to make it any more difficult. realize this kind of looks like those um, leaf fan shapes that you see in Hawaii sometimes. I don't know if it's a type of a palm leaf that they're copying or how that works. But... Alright, so I'm just going to keep working. Once I've finished a section that I know I want to keep, 
use my permanent marker to go over those lines I want to keep. If you are using water-based markers, then I would recommend waiting until you are all done with your pencil lines. You've done all of the detail work you want to do. And then, starting from the center, work your way out because water-based markers are much more likely to kind of run, get your hand um, I'm using a black water-based marker, then I would probably end up with black on the bottom of my hand here. And I might smudge that across my paper. So if the markers that you have at home are water-based, then just finish your detail in pencil and then start from the center and work your way out so that you don't move your hand across the water-based marker. They work just as well, they make great lines, there's no they can just be a little bit a little bit more messy than a permanent marker. I know when my kids were young, I didn't have a lot of permanent markers around the house for good reason. I didn't want the kids to start drawing with them. Uh, So I would just keep working my way around, finishing these two, and then I think I'm probably done with this little section, so I would do that section, and then I'll probably add some more detail in here and work that out. So that when I am finished, I have something that will look like this. So once again, I have the repetition of that rounded form and that pointy form. Repetition here, 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 and in there. And then I added some other just line forms. On this one, I decided to only do that kind of scroll wave on one side because I, found, I thought that was a little bit more interesting than doing it on both sides. All this is completely up to you. So enjoy. Hope you find some time to relax and focus on the now and make yourself some lovely art.